Before we take a look at the markets, I must ask you to please make sure that you have read and understood these disclaimers. So in my previous market update video, which I recorded on the 27th of November, which was uh, over here on this bar over here, I mentioned that the next interaction that I was expecting was going to be an F category interaction, in my opinion. I received many questions uh, about that video, and in particular, people were asking, why is this an F category interaction when up until this point, we had really only seen one clear interaction with the FLD? So uh, let me just go through some of the important subtleties to the identification of the FLD sequence here. The first thing to point out is that, of course, the sequence of interactions between price and the future line of demarcation is not something that Hearst ever mentioned or spoke about. It's something that I made up. It's something that I observed over years of trading interactions between price and the FLD. And this sequence is something that you find repeating itself over and over again. But you need to approach the identification of the sequence of interactions with some understanding, some subtlety. It's not an absolute science. It's not completely black and white. Uh, we have a, an entire course, of course, in trading the FLD trading strategy. And I think it's about... Uh, 60 videos or uh, 40 hours worth of training material. It's quite a big course, so there's quite a lot to understand uh, about this sequence. But here are the basics. The first thing is that you start identifying the sequence from a cycle that is three degrees in magnitude longer than the cycle that you are looking at in the FLD. So this purple line here is, of course, the 20-day FLD. So you start identifying the sequence from a trough of at least 80-day magnitude, which in this case is the trough in uh, early October, which was, according to this analysis, probably a 40-week cycle trough. The first interaction is the A-category interaction. Uh, the next interaction is considered to be the B category interaction. So what is an interaction, first of all? Well, usually it is when price drops down and either touches the FLD or crosses it, or climbs up and touches the FLD or crosses above it. But that is not always the case. These interactions are caused by the fluctuations in price movement uh, that are caused by the shorter cycles, the 5-day, the 10-day, and the 20-day cycle, and of course the 40-day cycle as well, all the cycles shorter than the 80-day cycle. When the longer cycles are exerting a lot of pressure, whether it's bullish or bearish pressure, then the influence of the shorter cycles is muted. It, they're squeezed. They are still happening, but it can be quite difficult to identify them. And so the shorter term movements can result in the fact that price doesn't actually cross down below the FLD. So how do you handle that situation? You don't say, well, I've identified an A category interaction, therefore my next interaction must be a B category interaction. You do not do that. You follow some basic guidelines. The first guideline is that the B category interaction occurs around about the 20-day cycle trough. So there is that 20-day cycle trough over there at the foot of the chart. The B category interaction is caused by price coming down into that 20-day cycle trough, at which point it usually finds support at the level of the 20-day FLD. As you can see, the bullishness in this market caused price to hesitate in its upwards movement, it didn't come down to the FLD and it didn't find support at the FLD. It didn't even reach the FLD. Could you call that an interaction? Well, I do. Some people would argue it's not an interaction because it didn't get near the FLD. Well, yes, but perhaps interaction is then the wrong term. The point is that the 20-day cycle was causing price to move downwards. It in fact only caused price to move downwards for one or two days but nevertheless, there was a slight downward pressure. And as price moved down towards the FLD, as it reached towards it, that little movement over there, that qualifies in the way that I have defined the sequence of FLD interactions as a B category interaction. 
even though it didn't in fact interact with the FLD, it moved towards it and that is good enough. Now the fact that it didn't interact with the FLD or didn't touch the FLD doesn't invalidate that as an interaction. What it does is it provides us with very useful information as I have mentioned in many of these market update videos. When price is expected to find support at the level of the FLD but it cannot even reach it, it tells us that there is a lot of bullishness in that market. And so as price broke up and away from the FLD, that movement away is the C category interaction. Okay, And the fact that it didn't touch the FLD was giving us useful information that there was a lot of bullishness in the market. The next interaction is the D category interaction. Now the D category interaction, again, can sometimes be an interaction that doesn't even touch the FLD. It's unusual. Most D category interactions cross below the FLD. But if there's a lot of bullishness in the market, as there has been in this market, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that, but it is quite possible that the D category interaction is, again, simply a matter of price moving closer towards the 20-day FLD. Now the D category interaction is also linked to the trough of another cycle in the analysis and that is the 40-day cycle. So the D category interaction is the interaction between price and FLD as price moves down towards the 40-day cycle trough. So here you can see the 40-day cycle trough according to this analysis was over here in early November and price in fact only moved down for a day maybe a, a day and a half in order to reach that 40-day cycle trough again some people would argue that's not an interaction but according to the way that i have defined this sequence it is the d category interaction where price moved down towards the fld in order to form the 40-day cycle trough again the fact that price didn't even touch the FLD provides us with very useful information. It tells us that the bullishness in this market is still very strong. Some people might argue that the 40-day cycle trough would be better positioned in this analysis at this point over here, where price did actually find support at the level of the FLD. Yes, possibly we could discuss it and we could debate it, uh, but there isn't time in, in this video to do that. In a bullish market, you must remember a concept defined by Hearst called time translation. And it tells us that in a bullish market, troughs occur early and peaks occur late. And so it is more likely to be correct that we position the 40-day cycle trough at the earlier position rather than the later position. But I'm digressing. The E category interaction, which is the next interaction, is where price bounces out of the 40-day cycle trough. It usually crosses up above the FLD because the D category interaction usually carries price below the 20-day FLD. And so the E category interaction is simply the bounce back up above the 20-day FLD as price bounces out of the 40-day cycle trough. Now, in this particular situation, price didn't get down below the 20-day FLD because we had a very bullish market. And so the E category interaction is simply the interaction where price moves up and away from the FLD. Therefore, the next interaction that I was expecting on the 27th of November was the F category interaction. Some people uh, did suggest that the F category interaction in fact had occurred over here as price came down and found support. Indeed it was possible. The identification of this sequence of FLD interactions is, like Hearst analysis itself, a little bit of an art. It's not absolute science, it's not entirely black and white. But uh, as I discussed in the video on the 27th of November, I was still expecting the F category interaction. Now in that video I mentioned that the F category interaction is where price crosses down below the 20-day FLD on its way down to the 80-day cycle trough. And there is the nest of lows for the 80-day cycle trough. And so I was expecting 
price to come down into that 80-day cycle trough. I received many questions saying, didn't I mean that, in fact, the F-category interaction carries price down to the 20-day cycle trough on its way to the 80-day cycle trough? And, in fact, that is not the case. The B category and D category interactions are linked to the troughs of shorter cycles which form in the price movement. However, the F category interaction is not specifically linked to the shorter cycle trough. It's a really important subtlety and we're perhaps getting a little too uh, involved here. But it's a, it's a very important little detail that the B category interaction and the D category interaction are linked to shorter cycle troughs. The F category interaction is not reliably linked to the 20-day cycle trough that you're expecting to form on the way down. The 20-day cycle trough could form before the F category interaction or it could form after the F category interaction. Uh, there is no guideline. I found it to be very unreliable. Uh, uh, the B category interaction always forms around the 20-day cycle trough. The D category interaction always forms around the 40-day cycle trough. The F category interaction is not linked to a shorter cycle. It is simply a matter of price on its way down towards the 80-day cycle trough. I was also asked whether the fact that none of the interactions from B all the way to E uh, actually touched the FLD, whether that was an extremely unusual situation. It's unusual, but it's not extremely unusual. You must remember that when the longer cycles are very bullish or very bearish, these interactions caused by the shorter cycles are going to be muted because of the fact that uh, the longer cycles are pushing with so much force. The final thing to say about this sequence is that we expect a G category and an H category interaction to follow the F category because there are usually eight interactions within every 80-day cycle. I mentioned in a fairly offhand manner in the previous video that perhaps the G and H category interactions simply wouldn't occur, and I received several questions about that as well. How is it possible that some interactions will just disappear? Well, it is possible. The eight interactions are a guideline, but sometimes price comes down forms the 80-day cycle trough, and then bounces straight back up and out again. And we don't get the G and H category interactions. Again, remember, this is a, a guideline to the way in which the uh, price interacts with the FLD. It's not an absolute science. So sometimes G and H category interactions disappear. I was asked the question, when does that happen? Well, it happens in a bullish market. And why does it happen in a bullish market? It happens in a bullish market because of time translation. Again, troughs are expected to occur early in a bullish market. And in a bullish market, the longer cycles are pressing upwards with more force. The shorter cycle interactions are muted. And so you don't get quite as many clearly identifiable shorter cycle wiggles in the price movement, if you like. And so you will sometimes find that the F category interaction is the final interaction in the sequence. So I hope that answers many of your questions about this FLD sequence.